Hello, today for Practical Life, we are going to talk about making yourself a hussif. A hussif is a sewing kit that usually is the kind that you can wrap up, travel with, take with you in all your adventures. And it is something that is quite simple to be able to open, use, and then put away. Now, there are many ways that people will keep track of their materials, and people have made containers for storing their sewing goods for seriously thousands and thousands upon thousands of years. In Montana, many tribal members would simply use hollowed out materials from plants. Some of our plants naturally have little sections to them and make little needle cases that way. There are lots of traditional ways to keep your materials. Some people, it's just as simple as having a cloth bag where you dump everything in. However, this is kind of hard to keep track of things and you gotta dig around a lot. And, and then what if you have something sharp and pointy in there and it comes poking out? Not the most usable. Easiest, but there's better ways of doing it. Now, some people might also have something like this. This is my daughter, Scarlett, and it is her sewing kit that is actually a hard sewing kit. Now, here she's got places to put her things, and inside you can set things loose. These are very common, and a lot of people have nice hard sewing kits like this. This one even has a little handle to help make it a little bit easier to take with you. And these are basically meant to sit on a shelf. It's very handy because when you do want to use them, you can leave it open, you have a place for your needles and all that kind of stuff. Now, as people would travel, however, it was not as handy to have a big, huge, heavy, hard case to carry your things. So the hussif comes from the word housewife. It's a contraction, a shortening of housewife to hussif. And the hussif actually refers to the sewing kit, not to the person. Now a hussif was specifically used and sent off with soldiers when they went to war. So this was part of European tradition for the past several hundred years. So a soldier would go off to war, he would have his kit of supplies that he would be responsible for carrying on his back. No one wants to carry one of these whole things on your back. So instead, they would make simple hussifs. Now, some of them were mass produced. People would make them and sell them to the army. Some of them would be made individually, and they were often something simple, kind of like this. Now, this one is a modern container. You can see it has lots of zippers, and inside each one of these little zippers is a case. Um, often these things are sold as travel cases for jewelry or makeup or things like that. They also work really well for your sewing supplies. Now this one is really quite useful. However, it has modern plastic and it has zippers on it. So when I'm doing living history and I wanna be able to sew while visitors are coming around, I can't have something with zippers and modern plastic. It just doesn't quite look right. But for you at home, something like this would be very useful. So I am going to show you the hussif that I have been working on, and it is not quite done. This one is based on some traditional designs that were used by ladies, especially those traveling out west on wagon trains and um, things like that, where space was at a premium and you didn't want some big bulky guy like that but you're also using it constantly. So you didn't want something like this that's really hard to keep organized. So there are others that are much more simple and especially the ones that soldiers would take would usually be much smaller than this, about half the size. Soldiers would sometimes even have competitions on who could make the best hussif. And many of the most impressively embroidered hussifs that we have in collections and museums today are those made by men. And one in particular I've seen has amazing embroidery on it. And it was part of a competition where that particular regiment decided to have a competition where the men competed to see who could make the best hussif. 
Now mine is just meant to be a simple one. It does not have near as much fancy needlework. What I will eventually do with mine is I will have a loop here that will attach in so it'll stay closed. And when I open it, I can hang that on all sorts of things. I could hang it on a nail, I could hang it on a tree branch, I could hang it just about anywhere and be able to access all of my tools. Now in my husseth, I have all the materials that I need to do all of my sewing. And I'm going to show you a couple of the things I have in here. These little containers at the top hold my marking chalk. This is sometimes called a tailor's chalk and I have them in a couple different colors. This is how I can draw on my fabric to show, show where all the shapes and the things are going to go. When I'm making clothing for people especially, I use my tailor's chalk quite a bit. So this is what tailors use to mark out the fabric, measure design, and then I cut along my chalk lines. Now I have a little bit of lace, some cotton lace on top of that, so that if I pick this up and it opens upside down, at least my chalk doesn't fall out. It's fairly fragile, as you can see by the fact that I accidentally broke off the corner of my blue guy here. Now from there, I also have a collection of thread. Thread was one of the things that I found was always getting lost and messed up in my little sewing bag, and I wanted it to be organized. Now, I thought this was pretty clever. I invented this myself. My thread container is nothing more than a pair of bamboo knitting needles. So it's just a knitting needle. And then I used all of my little wooden spools that I hand wove the thread on. And when I put my spool in the loop at the top, I can then push it all the way through and I have another little loop at the bottom. Now I do have a little bit of lace at the top of this one also just to secure it so it doesn't fall out. And just to make mine a little extra lovely, I have done some embroidery. And here on this one, you can see I have several of the Scottish thistles. So this would be to recognize and celebrate the Scottish heritage in our family. Now from there, I also wanted to just have a big container for all the different larger materials that I have. This is full of hooks and eyes and other little small metal pieces. And I just drop them in there. I will eventually make a button loop here so that I can keep things from falling out. This is called smocking. And this particular example was made by Mr. Delaney's mom. So Grandma Terry made this, and as you can see, it stretches. This is before elastic was available. It's stretching because the fabric is folded back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And she has done all this embroidery by hand to make it nice and stretchy. From there, I have a couple simple side pouches. Now this is something that you can make very easily yourself. All I did was take a rectangle of fabric and when I sewed it down, I just sewed it in lines. Here I have my needle case and it is a little bit fancier looking than, oh, I gotta do this two-handed. It's a little bit fancier looking than making them out of plants, but the idea is exactly the same. This is where I keep my needles. And let me tell you, Needles are an incredibly important thing to have when you are out in the wilds. And if you lose one, you can't just make another metal needle. So metal needles become a major trade good out in the West because you can make them and keep them for years and years and years. Whereas bone needles are a little bit bigger, bulkier, and more likely to break over time with too much use. Now also in my collection here, oh, let me get that in appropriately. Oh, I must have stuck it in there upside down. Haha, <laughs> did not pay attention. All right, so next up, while I am working, I often need to mark. And I have here a graphite pencil. It's solid graphite. 
and I didn't want it to make a mark. So I made a tiny little hat for it. Unfortunately, at some point, it actually broke on me and poked out and it made a mark on my fabric anyway. Oh well, it's just a sign that it gets used. Also in here, I have a very tiny crochet hook and that tiny, tiny hook is really useful for all sorts of tools, not just in crocheting. From there, I also have a tool called a stiletto. Now a stiletto is a long pointy thing because you never know when you might need to be able to push fabric to get something all nice and tight down into the corners or maybe there's even a naughty child that I need to poke. That's a joke, I would never poke my children. I might break my tool. Next up, I have a small brass brush and boar's hair bristles. This is used especially if you are working with um, wools or things like that. Sometimes you just need to brush the fabric instead of wash it. You can actually clean an entirely muddy piece of wool just by using this and you don't even need to get it wet. Actually, you don't want to get it wet. I also have in here another bit of pencil and this tool, you'll notice it kind of looks like a needle and it has a really, really big eye. That's the opening at the top. I use this for whenever I need to thread ribbon through something. So if I'm threading ribbon, this is my tool that I use to do that. From here, I also have two metal thimbles. Now, sometimes people think that the thimbles are there to protect yourself from poking your finger. That's not actually usually what they're for. If you look very closely, you'll see that they are covered in all of these little dents, kind of like golf balls. And what I do with them is when I'm sewing, I'll use them to push the needle through so that if I'm using really thick fabric, this will do the pushing instead of my soft fingertips. So again, people rarely use those to actually protect from getting poked. You just get poked sometimes. But they are used as a way of controlling and pushing the pins better. So here I have the harp, that is the Irish harp that is the symbol of Ireland. And I also have a little shamrock here, shamrog in Irish. So that represents our Irish heritage. And this little tool here has a little pillow. There's just um, soft little bits of, uh, it's actually a bunch of old thread that's shoved in there and some wool. I have a lot of wool in there. And here inside this is just a bit of gravel. It's very soft sand actually. And when my needles get old, you simply sharpen them by poking into that. And once you poke it a few times, the sand will make it all nice and sharp again. Under this, I have my needle book. And this is where I keep the needles that I am most recently using. And also these happen to have thread on them. So if I'm traveling, I don't want to get poked. And that is why I have a bit of leather. The leather keeps the needles from poking out. Now, when I first designed this, I didn't include that feature. I added it because I got poked. <laughs> I also have a few really fun tools in here. And this one you'll see I have embroidered my initials, J-M-D. This cool tool, useful in sewing, is a combination of a seam ripper. So I use this to rip seams out. I also use this part here to hold fabric in place. This is used for turning things, especially if I need to turn something inside out, like a big tube. And then inside, I have another stiletto. This one's really, really sharp. So it is good for poking holes in things, like if I need to poke holes in leather so that I can sew through that. That is also called an awl, A-W-L. This big fun tool here is called a darning egg. Now mine is just made simply of wood. Some of them are made of marble and other more sturdy kinds of materials. And this is here so that when I'm darning a sock, 
I have it nice and curved because my foot is curved and I don't want a big, rumply, ucky uh, seam on it. I also have this end for when I need to fix my gloves. So I can put the glove on here, sew the glove, and then I make sure that it is finger shaped. So this darning egg is extremely helpful when I am mending. It also has a little lace cap on it to keep it from moving. Now inside my rougher little leather pouch, which at some point will have a, a little loop and a button there, is where I keep my beeswax. It's just simply wax from bees who make honey. This actually came from my cousin's family. Uh, Betsy was keeping bees and she collected all the extra icky bits and I melted it down, cleaned it up, and now I have a bit of beeswax. I have it in this so that even if it gets really warm out, it won't melt into my fabric. Now on the bottom part here, you'll notice I have even a pocket on a pocket. Each of these pockets is made very simply. It is just a rectangle. I tossed it under and then decorative stitching all the way around the outside. This one's just a pocket on top of the pocket. Inside here, I have a very delicate little tool which is my little threading tool. And it's very easy to lose, very easy to break. So it gets its own very special pocket. In here, I can put all sorts of other things. These are some of my needles that have been put in reproduction containers. So they look similar to what they would have looked like when people bought them at the mercantiles in the, uh, in the past. Here I have some embroidery scissors. These are extremely extremely sharp so at the very bottom here i have a little bit of wool so that when i put this away it doesn't rip through all of my fabric and poke me out the other side it also has a little cap of lace to keep it from falling out down here i have my rather fancy looking sewing shears and they have a little toggle here to keep them from falling out and they also have a very stiff piece in here. This would have been made out of um, parflesh or a, a hard leather. Uh, mine happens to be plastic since it's modern. But this way I make sure that it doesn't poke, destroy the fabric, etc. So these scissors are only for use with fabric, nothing else. Woe to the person who uses mom's sewing scissors on anything else. So again, I just have a little toggle that holds it in place there. And then this little pocket here is really for whatever I want it to be. Right now, I happen to be using it to hold some of the little cards for my embroidering floss. This is the floss that I am using. Oh, and I have a little bit of ribbon and a little bit of wool. I've got a little bit of everything in there. This is the floss that I'm using to do all of the decoration on here. I simply took an upholstery fabric, sewed it on, and you can see I am not yet done. When I open this up on the inside, you can see all the stitching that I did on the opposite. So once I get everything put together here, now I'm going back through and I'm stabilizing all of my marks. So you can see where I've done a couple lines so far. I still have to sew down this line. And there are a few other places here where I will secure it so that my fabric doesn't start to pull and damage over time. Eventually, once I get all of that done, I will finish up the bottom so that I no longer have that part open. I don't need access to the inside. I'll make sure that I've added all of my loops and all of my fabric that I need to hold it together. And then this is how it goes back together at the end. I will simply flip over the thread parts. See, this guy keeps wanting to open. I need to get its little uh, curl button on there sooner rather than later. I'll flip this part over, same deal. And there will be ties that I'll simply tie this, tie this, and it'll keep those from flopping out. This part here will then come straight up and over. Sorry, I should have put that in there a bit better. And then at the very top, this part will come fold right back down. And then I will have a nice, easy, 
very compact, easy to carry because there will be a loop on it, sewing kit. And it doesn't matter if we are traveling on the trail, if somebody loses a button or tears something and I need to mend it, I simply pop this open, toss it out on a tree branch, and I'm ready to sew. So that right there is an introduction to the Hussif, short for housewife. You don't have to make one near as fancy as this, but there are some very, very simple designs that you can use that will help you keep all of your craft tools together. You can make them for your art supplies. You could make them for cooking tools that you camp with. You could make them really for any tools that you want to have nicely organized. The United States continued to issue servicemen and women, hussifs, and continue to have small uh, sewing kits available to soldiers today. The Canadian Army continued to standard issue a regular hussif until the 1990s. And this does continue to be something that is very, very handy to have around the house. So there you have your introduction to the hussif.